All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, uh, we're going to dive right on and keep on going with the series. We're going to be doing 90s. Now, let me tell you this. Um, just today, our governor in Virginia decided to put a mandate out until like June 10th on closures on all kinds of different things. So, um, what do you do in a time like this? You do YouTube videos. All right, so you're going to be hearing a lot of noise because it is extremely windy here. I don't have any idea... For the last like three days, it has been so unbelievably windy that um, I've actually been putting off these videos because of this. Now, obviously my voice is coming back a little bit. Um, it's been like, what, a week? And of course, you know, it's the wrong time to have allergies right now, you know, especially with the COVID-19 going on. But what we're going to do is we're going to do, like I said, two 90s, my last video. We're going to do a short 90 and then we're going to do a 12-inch uh, 90. Now, 90s are really easy. What you're going to need to do this job is this. You're gonna need a tape measure, a Sharpie, a level, and somebody to spit some measurements at you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a close 90. Okay, so on a short 90, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we keep um, ourselves out of the bend when we get it short. Now, my recommendation is this. Uh, you do not want to come, this is just my recommendation. You don't wanna put the bender right at the very edge of the pipe. Uh, I don't think it would you know, crush it too much where you can't get a connector on. But depending on how bad your bender's used, um, if it's in good condition or not, uh, it possibly could make your pipe oblong and you don't want that. So what I recommend doing is putting just about a hair over your hook and uh, that way if it's too long, you can cut it now. You do have some leeway because uh, if you put a connector coupling on, you can actually cut some of this off if you need to have a shorter 90. But I don't recommend doing that. I recommend leaving it um, where you have it. Now, obviously, certain applications will call for a shorter 90, and then you have to do what you have to do. If you come into the place where, like when I was doing electrical, uh, my journeyman always wanted me to cut the shortest 90 possible. Sometimes, and I hated doing it, but I was just a, a helper. You know, I didn't know any better. I just was bending what I was told to do. I actually had to cut into the bend of it and put a connector on and then put it back in like a hickey bender and then bend it straight. You don't want to do that. That looks like horse crap. But, you know, I was fresh out of, you know, apprentice class and that's what they were told me to do. I won't do that no more. So you want to make it look good. Even if you can't see it after the sheetrock goes up, in your mind you still know. I still think about it. And that's been like 20 years ago almost. You just want to make sure that, you know, you do this right and get it done in super easy, okay? Now, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to bend one obviously, just a regular short one, it's pretty cut and dry, I'm going to show you how to level it up and everything, and then we're going to go 12 inch 90 and I'll explain more how to measure, how to put it on um, the floor and bend it. Alright, so in all my videos I've been saying cosant chart, and um, you know, <laughs> Chris Kaloskin, now if that's not how you say your name, I'm sorry if I butchered it, uh, but kind of called me out and said it was cosine and he is exactly right so when I say cosine it's really cosine um, but anyway I, that's just it's really nothing but anyway he did call me out and he was right so the cosine chart so anyway if you do want me to do a little video on that like I always mentioned before I'll show you but that has really nothing to do too much with these 90s anyway I just want to throw it at you thank you Chris I do appreciate you uh, calling me out because because I don't want to say things wrong and, you know, steer people wrong. So I appreciate it. All right, so we're going to put this into the bender. Now, this is an ideal half-inch bender. Uh, anything that you see um, in this video, I will leave links down below to my Amazon store where you can you know, look at it. You can buy it. All it does is help the channel. will not charge you anything more than um, it normally would if you were to go buy it on yourself. Plus, it helped me out. All right, so let's take a look at this bender first. All right, first thing first. Now, I do know I have a screw in the middle of my bender. And you can see it says five inch take up. So that, for stubs, so that means that's how much take up it is uh, for your 90s. Now, if you were going to do a 10 inch 90, you would mark it five inches because you, got, you already have a five inch take up for your shoe plus the five inches. Uh, the shortest 90 you can get, that depends on a lot of factors. How much you leave it hanging out of your hook and how much um, your bender is slopping. Now, this one's pretty good. It looks like crap, obviously, because it's, I mean, it's been used. I mean, you can see it's, it's definitely been used. But it is a good bender. Um, you know, these ductile heads is perfect. 
I have aluminum head one also, but this one here is really good, ductile iron. So let's go ahead and drop to the floor and see about getting a 90 on here. We're gonna do a close one, we're gonna measure it, we're gonna level it, and then I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. So some of you guys may or may not recognize this three-point saddle. It was in another video, obviously, that I done, and if you wanna see that, guys, I will link that right up in that corner so you can watch that. It's just a little part of this series. So, like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend this 90. Uh, first thing you wanna do is make sure that your ground is level. That's important. Now, I know my garage is really good and level, so uh, the floor is perfect. So we'll put this into the bender, and we're gonna leave it hanging out just a little bit, and that's just to keep it from being egged on the very end. Now, good thing is, if you cut it or bend it a little long like this, if you need to cut it, you can cut some off. So we're gonna bend this. I'm gonna show you what this bend is, and I'm also gonna show you what the minimum for this piece of pipe right here that you can do to cut off so it'll keep your connector or your coupling sliding down there perfectly without you know you have to force it on with a pair of clines and hit it because if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about let's bend this unit all right what you want to do is you want to put your foot on the heel of this bender and you want to have really ample and you want to have good hand pressure so you know the higher you go the more pulling force you're going to have so i keep my hand right about there and my foot pressure is really 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 tight on the on the ground. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this and we're gonna bend it. All right, with my hand pressure at the very top, my foot pressure down here, you're gonna wanna drive your foot to the floor and your hand back towards you. So we'll just do one fluid motion, all while putting as much force as you can. Now, I'm not talking about so much where, you know, your foot starts hurting. Just, you know, just keep it down low and just keep going up, going up. Now, after you get used to this, you can kind of visually look down this pipe and see if it's kind of level or not. Now that's pretty close. So let's get a level down on here and we'll see what it looks like. Now I can see it's not exactly right. So yeah, it needs a little bit more in it. So we'll put the bender back on there and we're going to pull just a little bit more. Now some people might say, well, how do you know where to put the bender back? Well, when you put your bender in there, you'll feel it. It'll sit where it needs to sit. So, or you can take a marker and you can mark. So every time you know to put your pipe back in there but you know it's just really up to you after you get used to it you'll know how to how to um put it in there without any problems now that right there to me looks very level so let's see what happens i do wear glasses so you know so it's a little little much your handle on your bender if it's too much you can hold your foot down on this piece of pipe you can put this in here and just give it a little tweak you want to go down as far as you can so you don't egg your pipe up it's just not it's not too far off so we'll see now. Yep, that's good enough. All right. Let's see what the measurement is on this. All right, let's see what the measurement is. We have right at about six and three eighths. Now you can see I have a lot of real estate right here to cut to uh, allow a coupling or connector or you know whatever to slide down here without getting into the radius of your 90 because that's what you don't want. So technically, Let's see how much I can cut off there. So to keep out of that, what you want to do is you kind of want to see where the throat of your connector or coupling, whatever it is, like once you do this a couple times, you'll know you can just say, okay, well, I can't get but X amount. So what you want to do is you want to look. Now, I know that right about there is about the minimum that I could go cutting it off without getting right into the end of the 90. So that mark right there is representing the very shortest of 90s I can get. Now, if you bend this and your journeyman's like, oh, sorry, that's too, you know, still too long, don't throw it away because you can use it somewhere else. So let's see what that, that measurement will be. It's five and a half. So what I did is I measured to the bottom of my throat of my connector here because the pipe ends in this connector right here. So I measured to the bottom because that on this right here is where it's going to sit close to that radius of the 90. So the measurement I just gave you, the five and a half, that's the minimum I can get on this bender. So having said that, let's go ahead, put this pipe to the side, and let's bend a 12 inch 90. Guys, do you recognize this? This also is another video I've done in this series about box or uh, about offsets. If y'all want to watch that, I'll link it right up in this corner and you can uh, watch that too. All right, so we're going to flip this pipe around, obviously because we don't need that offset on there. Now, we know by looking at this bender, 
And this bender, not particularly this one because it's a lot of it's wore off, but has a lot of information on it. So my suggestion is if you're not familiar with all the different measurements and stuff like that, take a picture of this or go to Lowe's, take a picture of theirs, and then that way you always have a reference. Um, it's good to know your bender for sure, and every bender is a little different, but we do know that this one right here is a five inch take up. So what exactly does that mean? All right, so the take up is five inches. So we already know that you're gonna to to subtract five inches from 12, right? Okay, there's two ways to do this. You can take five inches, subtract 12, and that'll be, you know, seven inches. All right, there's two ways to do this. There's the easy way, and then there's, if you don't, you know, if you don't really wanna to try to figure out your math, there's another easy way. I'm gonna show you both. All right, so you know that five inches is the amount of the stub. So you're gonna take five inches, and you're gonna take away, because you want a 12 inch 90, so 12 minus five is seven. So what you would do, obviously, is you would put it at seven inches. Now, that's one way of doing it. Another way is you can just go ahead, take your tape measure, you can hold over the very end, right at five inches, and you guys can see right here that that mark is at 12 inches. All right, so having said that, we know that our take up right now is five inches. So, and that's because we want a 12 inch 90, correct? Let's see if that works. So on this mark right here, what you'll need is you'll need to put your arrow of your bender, which is right here, it's on both sides, into this bender. So we'll just put it in like this, and make sure the arrow is kind of really close. All the while we're gonna be putting foot pressure down here and hand pressure on the very top like I showed you. Let's go ahead and pull this in, see what it, see what it looks like when it's all said and done. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go, foot pressure and hand pressure. Let's see. All right. Now, the good thing about the way we have it in here, we have all this real estate, so you wanna make sure that you clean your, your uh, level off, make sure there's nothing on it. Now we can see. Definitely needs a little bit more. All right, let's see now. All right, so I got too much in there. So what the best thing to do, like I mentioned, is take your handle, We'll put it in here like so. All right. And we'll just give it a little tweak because it's not much. We'll put the level back on. Still a little much. And we'll take a little bit more out. All right. Boom. Perfectly level. Now, let's see if it's 12 inches. All right, so the stupid battery one did. Uh, let's see. Now, moment of truth. It is, might be a sixteenth under, but really, cl really close. So it pays to know your bender a little bit. Uh, pretty close though. I mean, it's could be the floor, but close enough. Hi right, guys, pretty easy, right? So what I was using for the level was just old Klein level. They make a lot better ones now, but I've had this for some years. Got the rare earth magnets, all that jazz in it. It's probably a good idea for you guys to when you do your bends. To bend on a scrap piece of pipe and just see if your bender is exactly right. Mine was pretty close. Like I said, mine's in really good shape, even though it does look like hell. It has been used, but it has, when you buy a good bender like the ductile iron, you know, you've got a good practice a little bit more, but you get what you pay for. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions at all about these uh, 90s, real easy to do. Uh, remember, just hold over five inches and then you can deduct it that way. So when you hold over five inches, like I've shown you, the battery went dead, so I'm not sure if I said this or not. I'm gonna go ahead and re-say it, just in case. So, that was 12 inches, because you're already taking your five inches away from, you know, your thing. Once you hold your five inches, you can go as far as you want on this scale. You can do a two foot 90 if you want, so on and so forth. So, yeah, real easy, right? I mean, it's simple to do it like that. That way there's no math involved in it. You just hold over five inches, and then if, the, if your journeyman says, or you are saying, okay, well, I need a 12 inch 90, boom. You just hold it five inches, mark it at 12. If it's a 40 inch 90, you would hold it at five inches and mark it at 40, or just mark it at 35. It's really the same thing. And I, a lot of the times when I have these weird measurements, um, I will do that and double check myself. I'll hold over five inches, I'll mark it what I think it is, you know, at the, let's just say 35. And then I'll put it back down and I'll make sure it is at 40 and so on and so forth. So, Really cut and dry, guys, and um, yeah, 
so let's do it now. So sometimes uh, in your career, you're going to be wondering what all the rest of these marks are on your, on your bender. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to keep on with the 90s. And this star right here, I'm going to show you guys how to use that star, okay? Uh, that'll be their next video. We're going to show you guys exactly how to use that star to bend a 90. That's Unless there's something else that I'm, you know, not familiar with, that's about the only reason why you would use that star. Unless you're stargazing. Anyway, so uh, that'll be the next video. After that, uh, what I want to do is do a uh, shepherd's cane. So if you don't know what that is, you're going to have to definitely subscribe to here and hit that bell notification so you guys will see when I do it so you'll know what I'm talking about when, you, when I do it. Uh, there's not a whole lot of applications and there are... A lot of people that do not like that bend, but it does have its purpose. All right, so guys, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I have a lot of bending videos in this series already. Um, like I said, you know, I'm gonna be doing the star next, then the shepherd's cane. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next after that. So if you have a suggestion, leave it down below. Uh, I know there's gonna be kicks and stuff like that. So I'll be using these 90s that I have bent to do the kicks, so, and I may, I may kind of spice it up. I may do the kicks first. I don't know, so you could definitely have to subscribe just to see what I'm gonna do next. All right, guys, if you like what you see, like and subscribe, God bless, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.